I brought you this. Hold it. I won't. Please, just hold it. It told me to find you. It wants to be held. You've had this watch all this time. Why didn't you return it? Because it was waiting. And because I was so scared of the doctor. Why? Because I've seen him. He's like fire and ice and rage. He's like the night and the storm and the heart of the sun. Stop it. He's ancient and forever. He burns at the center of time and he can see the turn of the universe. Stop it, I said stop it. And he's wonderful. Welcome to this week's Tin Dog Podcast. Of course, this week we'll be talking about the family blood. Part 2 of Human Nature. From a script by Paul Cannell, based on the novel by Paul Cannell. Not starring Paul Cannell. However, if you want to listen to Paul Cannell talk about it, go to the BBC website, and you can of course download the commentary for the episode where you can hear him talk all about it. Which, to be fair, I've just finished listening to now. It's a good commentary. I would recommend you go to them and have a bit of a listen. Some of them have people you're sort of sitting there going, surely your input's in like, you know, 23 minutes in and 48 minutes in or whatever, and you're kind of sitting there going, uh, what are you doing here? But some of the commentaries are very, very good. I definitely suggest, just for some interest, just to give them a quick listen. Anyway, this week's story. It did not disappoint. And that's something I must admit last week I was kind of scared about. It was, to be fair, the nicest story of this whole season so far. Episodes 11, 12 and 13 are really going to have to be going. I'll discuss what I think of episode 10 at the end of this podcast. But they're really going to have to be going to be better than this. Now I've watched big sections of this season so far all the way through. And... They are much, much better on second viewing. Shakespeare Code, Gridlock, all very, very well put together. So I'm really genuinely looking forward to watching Human Nature and The Family Blood back to back in a nice one and a half hour story. And of course, it's the pacing of the story that works most for me. Because I thought, oh well, you know, the alien spaceship's been destroyed, everybody goes over... Oh, the episode must be finished. I felt like I'd seen a huge full story. But there was five minutes left. Five minutes of seeing the future, of seeing the pocket watch in use in the First World War, and uh, then the memorial service with Paul Cannell's ever-popular female vicar. Ah, yes, he does like to put them in his stories. Always good. Well, you can always work that out by visiting his MySpace and seeing about his own life. Let's leave it there. Why did that sound more seedy than it was meant to? It really wasn't. I'm a big Paul Canal fan, as last week's podcast will testify. What did I think of this week's story? Well, it's very good. It made me want to read the novel. I must admit, I went online with my PSP and started reading the online version of the novel from the BBC website, considerably cheaper than going on eBay and spending an absolute fortune, or going into your cupboard and finding your old copy that you had lying around that you really should have shifted some time ago. I must admit that, like last week, my only real problem was with the Scarecrows, which for some odd reason in Scotland seemed to be called Jack Straw. Now, don't get me wrong, I I thought he was actually an MP of some sort. But what do I know? I know so little of politics, he lied unconvincingly. Ah, yes, and then there's, of course, the lovely Vickers Armstrong machine gun. Water-cooled, I believe it is, and a very nice piece of kit. Um, I think I invented by Hiram Maxim, but... I could be wrong. What what am I meant to know? It's not like I work anywhere where I'm meant to know about weapons or anything. Crashing on. Any issues that I do have with the show are just kind of, well, they're picking. They're picking at something that was just lovely. Uh, Little issues like, I would like to have known slightly more of the motivation of the family blood. That they wanted the Time Lord for... I know we worked it out, it was implied... 
but I can imagine being a bit younger going, what are they after him for? And then discovering that what they wanted was his sort of regenerations or the knowledge of how to live forever or whatever. And that way, the cutaway sequences where the Doctor lets them get what they want might have had slightly more impact. But that's just me being picky because the episode was lovely. And I'll tell you one thing. When Mother of Mine is sucked into the event horizon of uh, Dwarf Star Galaxy or whatever it is, was that a reference to Warrior's Gate? Probably. Then one knew that it was a lot to do with green screen and the effects were very nice. However, the image that will stay with you, well, will stay with me, is the girl trapped behind every mirror ever with a little red balloon. Very nice. And then, of course, there's the merchandise opportunity. I'm sorry. There's the pocket watch. If they don't bring one out for Christmas, I will be very, very surprised and slightly disappointed because it was a lovely thing. Of course, the little little bits need to glow inside slightly, but that's all right. I'm sure they can do that. It would make a lovely addition. I mean, let's face it, there's enough Doctor Who watches out there. There's the McGann one, there's the Dalek one, there's the, another couple just come out. So I can't see them not being in position to make them. And I know a lot of people who would like one. I think the pocket watch was a definite step forward from the novel where the Doctor's, I'm going to use the word soul, or essence or whatever, his knowledge, his time lordness was held in a cricket ball. Very English, but I think the pocket watch has got something kind of cool about it. This is a great introduction to someone who's not seen the series before. To me it ranks with Girl in the Fireplace, which I just love. Ah, Girl in the Fireplace, of course. Uh, that brings me to episode 10 of this season. Now, sadly, you've just realised, like me, there's only a month left. Four more episodes. Episode 10 is the Love and Monsters story. And I don't mean that it's a comedy story or it's odd or anything like that. What it is, is the Doctor's not in it very much. Now, obviously, what they've done is they've taken a couple of days available filming for Tennant and then pasted him into a story containing other people, like Love and Monsters did. Now... What they've done is, they've also got the writer of Girl in the Fireplace, hence the reference earlier, to do this, because we stand a chance of ending up with an extremely good story, a scary story, a challenge to any writer, write a Doctor Who story without the Doctor in it very much. Well, it could be a success. I'm holding out hope, but not a huge amount of hope. I will watch it, obviously. I mean, let's face it, how would I have to talk about? But episode 10 has been the thing that's worried me the most. Of course, this could just be me worrying for no reason whatsoever. This week, however, I've also managed to watch all eight episodes so far of Infinite Quest. Now, for those of you who aren't following it, there's a kids' series on BBC One called Turtley Doctor Who. And they all talk very, very turtly about turtly Doctor Who. There's some interviews, there's some fairly mundane stuff. Nothing you could really get from, you couldn't really get from uh, Doctor Who magazine. But they do have a nicely animated short. Obviously it's going to last all 13 episodes. So it all fits together. So it's sort of two and a half minutes per episode. And they all come together to make one, I'm guessing, 40 odd minute story. So every week I've been recording Totally Doctor Who and I've been transferring them over. But to be honest, I've not really been watching them. So last night I sat down, edited all of the episodes so far together and watched them in one go. And I must admit, I really liked it. There's a lot of things being learnt from the Invasion animation and adapted and augmented. And it's nice to see, for once in a while, proper aliens on proper alien worlds orbiting alien suns, doing alien things. Oh, it's lovely. I, for one, always thought that Doctor Who would come back one day. This was after the classic series was cancelled, but it would come back as an animated series. And if it had come back, and it was this good, I genuinely wouldn't be upset or annoyed. So if you can get hold of these stories, track them down, give them a watch, or perhaps just wait another four weeks and wait for the whole thing to be edited together. I think the BBC would definitely be missing a trick if they didn't, A, release this, possibly with Scream of the Shalker on one disc. Ooh, that would be nice. Or possibly putting it together with, you know, the Season 3 boxed set as an extra. 
Now that would be nice. That would be worth getting it for a loan. Right. Obviously at this point is where I normally tell you my email address. So I might as well tell you my email address. tin-dog.co.uk is the web address. And my email address is tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. So that about wraps up this week's episode. I'm looking forward to next week. I'm looking forward to seeing the challenge. And I will, of course, release another show then. And remember, eventually I'll be doing some nice shows on other stories. So if you've got any requests, just give me a shout. Somebody has requested something on Death Comes to Time. So, like a good little boy I am, I'll shove Death Comes to Time back onto my iTunes playlist and give it a good listen to so I can give you a proper review and not just talk nonsense. Oh, hang on. That's why you listen to me. Okay. Be seeing you. Oh, my God.